Good morning. Thank you. Dear uh, friends, I can say that uh, at the beginning of third millennium in the United Nations, when we signed this document for this new millennium, our hope for peace in a new phase of human development was a big one, qu quite a huge one. In fact, today, during these uh, 14 years, we see everywhere in the world different tragedies, clashes, conflicts, and bloodsheds like in Syria, Palestine, Iraq, Libya, Ukraine, etc. Also, in most cases, the response of interventions of international community was delayed or orientated. A typical example is the conflict Israel-Palestine. And I can say that the decision, the last decision of Swedish government was the right one. On the contrary, the reaction from foreign ministry of Israel considering this uh, policy like a, a management of IKEA furniture business was the wrong one. But uh, today, its uh, ending of this uh, conflict is becoming important because the so-called Arab Spring well, as said, Israel in direct confrontation with Arab peoples and not only with their rulers. Because uh, with the rulers was not a serious problem under the pressure of uh, great powers. Uh, well, the problem uh, in many cases was resolved. In fact, while our global world is becoming more interconnected and interdependent, <coughs> in the same time, it is safeguarding barriers and walls of different kinds. Parts of them are walls such as Berlin Wall, which has represented both the physical separation between West Berlin and East Germany, but also a symbolic boundary between democracy and socialism during the Cold War, a boundary between two ideological camps. For that, the destruction of the Berlin Wall was considered as an obvious event in the fall of totalitarian system in Eastern Europe. A new physical wall of modern time, up to eight meters high, was the dividing two communities, Israeli and Palestinians. Well, I've been uh, for elections in 2006 in uh, Jerusalem with the President Carter and uh, Karl Bild. And there, we have had a kind of a meeting with Tit Livni, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel. And I said, well, how it was possible, this community, to communicate to each other if we have these uh, walls of eight meters? And the answer was, uh, well, these are only fences. And this kind of consideration that the fences are, are necessary was, I believe, was a wrong idea. And the same thing, well, we have had uh, in the uh, United States some years ago, there they have started a project of building walls at the border with Mexico to minimize uh, the illegal border crossing. Now this illegal uh, crossing is, uh, well, is uh, realized in less controlled areas, in mountains and desert areas. So it's not the solution. The walls are not the solution. But uh, these physical walls are only a part of the problem. Our major concern are ideological walls, cultural walls, walls of autocracy, authoritarianism, and the new colonialism. Walls of abuses and corruptions, as we see in different countries. Walls of demagogy, false populism, particularly which is increased in uh, Latin America, and also the religious uh, fundamentalism. In these last uh, cases, employing only hard power or only soft power is a in a given situation will uh, usually prove inadequate. But it's uh, important to consider the smart power strategies. Thus, uh, utilizing simply soft power resources 
to change the art of, and mind of Taliban groups or IC militants would be ineffective. To fight them, it, requ it requires a hard power component. While in developing different relations with mainstream Muslim world, soft power resources are necessary and the use of hard power would have damaging effects and more creating new walls. In some cases, in international agreements, the hard power is present also in diplomacy, even in different negotiations, and involvement of diplomatic pressure is quite clear. For instance, in the chapter five, chapter six of uh, Charter of the United Nations, any recommendation included there could be considered soft. The problem becomes different when you are referring to the chapter seven, but explicitly the military intervention and the use of force are including in the article 44.2 in the chapter seven. On the other side, the veto power in the Security Council, in my view, it's a hard power mechanism, which is many, in many cases is blocking the process itself or postponing the right uh, solution for different crises. It's, it, it speaks clearly on the necessity of the reform in the United Nations, particularly for the Security Council. Also, considering the actual critical situation in the world, I believe new amendments are necessary in the Charter of the United Nations, considering the fact that the world of today is clearly different of the post-war world. For that, we need quite defined roles or new regulations for different structures or mechanism of hard power, example for NATO, or for soft power mechanism, it has OCE or collective bodies functioning by consensus. Very important remains the fight for the respect of freedom and human rights particularly strengthening the gender equality in decision-making process. Well, because we are here, I don't believe that the solution for our world is the reintegration of the beliefs or religions. We have one religion, which is the human rights. We have to, to try to convert this religion to ideology or philosophy of our century, and this is the human rights uh, and freedoms uh, ideology. Well, um, I like to, to say that another problem linked to the human rights is the guarantee of life. As I remember years ago, well, the Israeli legal, ethical, and operational approach to killing terrorist leaders was criticized sharply around the world. But after this event of 11th September, it was adapted by the United States and other countries. This kind of killing was considered a tool in the global war against terror. As we see, it is becoming a central component of the war on the terror, a key weapon in the fighting on the Islamic State militants after execution of journalist James Foley on August 19. For that, based on the principles of Abeas Corpus, well, it's Magna Carta of 1215, so it was 800 years ago, a special legislation in national global level must be drafted and approved regarding uh, this so-called targeted killings or bomb bombing in the case uh, where we have uh, uh, simple people, particularly children. Particularly when it will be considered a necessary action or will be a penal one, even a criminal one. On the other hand, we have to think seriously on the future because something is going wrong in our today world. We have to understand and to find the right response for different questions. For example, what is the real motivation and why there is an increasing number of angry and disaffected young men from around the world now rallying in the 
I see banner. Why they are pulled to kill and be killed in the wastelands of Syria and Iraq to commit to a form of predi predication unrecognizable for, to their parents or their co communities? What is driving them to act of horror, such as the perpetrated upon Foley, the first American citizens to be killed by this Islamic State? In my view, we must uh, rebuild the trust among people, religions, ethnic communities, and countries. Well, this conference is also contributed to that. More to rebuild this trust, we must rebuild uh, the conceptual framework on democratic governance, particularly considering the free and fair elections as necessary conditions, while the sufficient conditions are linked to culture, social, and economic emancipation. More is needed for the shift of the power from the central government to local authorities on one side and to supranational, supranational structures as United Nations, Security Council, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, etc. on the other side. A new political balance and evaluation is needed for the binomial stability and democracy, democracy and effectiveness, particularly considering many frozen conflicts. Well, if you see what is uh, happening in, the, in our world, we have everywhere the frozen conflicts. And uh, following the, the speech of Judge Julia Sebutiande, um, I'm sorry for the pronunciation of the name, well, there she has uh, spoken about different uh, uh, conflicts. I will uh, mention some of them and for me, these are quite important. And one of them, which is one of the first frozen conflicts, is uh, the conflict linked to the relations between India and Pakistan for Kashmir. Well, it was a frozen conflict since uh, 1948, uh, 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 repeated in 1965, 1999, and another one was the division of Korea, frozen since uh, 1953. Another one is Arab-Israeli conflict with the Palestinian question in the, in the heart, in the center, while well, frozen many, in many cases. Western Sahara conflict, frozen since uh, 1991. Cyprus dispute, frozen since 1904. Situation in Transnistria. Well, I, I, I've touched this situation because I've been uh, in many cases uh, in uh, Moldova. This is a conflict which is frozen since 1992. Nagorno-Karabakh war, frozen since 1994 in Azerbaijan. Also, Abkhaz-Georgian conflict, frozen 2008. Georgian-Ossetian conflict. And today, Ukrainian-Russian conflict with a Russian tendency to treat, to treat it as a frozen one after the Crimea annexations. In my view, well, the, the solution, the best solution of this frozen conflict was between West Germany and uh, East Germany with the fall of uh, Berlin Wall. And another solution, which was also quite a positive one, was the, the, this conflict between North Ireland and England. And we have to consider these cases where the solution has been considered a positive one and to, to see how the other conflicts is to find a kind of a, a result. Because otherwise, uh, well, we, we will keep this uh, frozen conflict. And we'll, we'll, if we we'll keep this frozen, frozen conflicts, it means that we have walls there. Uh, but if we have walls, it means also we can have, again, uh, wars uh, between uh, people there. And, uh, I came back from uh, Korea, and uh, for me, there is a possibility for a solution there. The solution will be through uh, economic development. The South Korea was quite well developed. In the North, people are, are suffering. One day, they will uh, react, and uh, there will be a possible uh, unification following the, the model of uh, Germany. In global level, 
I, I believe regarding this uh, uh, conflict, well, the intervention must be better legalized and different uh, sanctions or military might, might be applied and when it will be absolutely necessary. When it, we can find uh, peaceful solutions is better because in all these cases, the simple people are suffering. For example, in the case of uh, two Koreas, well, people in, in the North Korea, they are suffering. Uh, the po poverty there is quite clear, while the, the leaders in conflict, particularly the, the main leader in uh, yeah. North Korea, well, is accumulated more power. It's not suffering. It's more. It's accumulated more power, yeah. and also uh, through this kind of sanctions or military Just pressure, well, it can also accumulate more uh, nationalist support. In uh, right. other or different cases, well, we have to consider also the digital penetration. And for that, we have to elaborate more in details the strategy of smart power and particularly using uh, two important mechanisms like cultural diplomacy and economic diplomacy. Uh, regarding the conflict, uh, I, I can <coughs> tell you a story. It was uh, with uh, Madame Albright. When this Kashmir, uh, began, uh, the Kashmir conflict began, it was in 1947, and uh, it was uh, sent by the United Nations, uh, her father, like uh, ambassador of United Nations, to resolve the conflict. And uh, if you are asking uh, Madame Albright, well, uh, she said, I've worked for this uh, conflict, and uh, still this conflict is there. So we see that all these frozen conflicts is coming, uh, of course, also from uh, this kind of uh, international game, but these frozen conflicts are creating walls, and we have also to destroy uh, these walls. It means to find solutions for these uh, frozen uh, conflicts. In addition to the ideological and geopolitical walls of the Cold War, other divisive walls are social economic ones, which are also mentioned here. The walls between the rich and poor regions, the walls of technological divisions between high tech manu manufacturing and user countries, or countries totally separated of the process of technological adoption, the walls between countries selling goods and high technology services and country, countries supplying raw materials for less money, damaging or polluting their environments, etc. Very problematic are walls of human exclusion with a country or among different countries, including different barriers from the visa restriction and border sanction policies to the strengthening of laws on asylum, readmission procedures or agreements, etc. In this sense, in my view, also the Schengen project itself could be seen in many cases as a project wall, but as we see, it is still needed. However, the story of walls does not end here. We leave ourselves with walls. They are walls of lack of freedom and dignity, psychological walls of fear and absence of courage, of civic resistance and public reaction, walls of surrounding to the political power and so on. In fact, what is required is the opposite, the breaking of all these internal walls inside us, but also in parallel way, the walls outside us, independently of rhetoric, of politics, to build an environment without walls, our world is still preserving diverse boundaries or walls, and for their collapses, it uh, needs a tireli tireless work, and uh, in my view, one of these two uh, Tireless work is needed also in uh, Balkans. There, very important, is uh, the dis dis destruction of any border myth. And uh, as we see, the situation uh, today in uh, Balkans is quite different from what it was uh, more than 10 years ago during the wars 
wars in Bosnia, in Croatia, and the last one in Kosovo. Now we have also uh, um, serious negotiations between uh, Kosovo and uh, Serbia. Well, some uh, are considering uh, this kind of um, conflict between Serbia and uh, Albanians in Kosovo as a frozen conflict. In my view, it is not more a, a frozen conflict because they are negotiating and they are finding solutions. Well, uh, the last step will be when uh, this new state, Kosovo, will be accepted by Serbia. Because today, more than 110 uh, members of the United Nations are recognizing uh, Kosovo like a state. And uh, in, uh, United, in the European Union, there are 24 members, uh, or 23 members that, that have accepted uh, this new state. And uh, well, the same situation in other organizations, which means that this process is at the end. And the, the, we, for that reason, I didn't consider this conflict between uh, Serbia and Kosovo uh, a frozen conflict. Another thing to be considered, and with this one, I, maybe I will stop. It's my time. It's uh, finished, I believe. Well, we have to consider more the right of minorities and uh, the right of religious communities. Well, uh, one of the examples, the best examples for the rights of minorities and also respecting the rights of different religious communities is Albania. You know that uh, uh, some uh, days ago it was uh, paid a visit uh, in uh, Albania from the Pope. And they consider this kind of coexistence between religions there a model for other countries, and this is true. The same thing is also for uh, uh, ethnic uh, uh, groups cooperating uh, and coexisting to each other. Another element which is important to, to be fought and not, not to be considered more like a wall is uh, the gender issues or woman empowerment. And uh, well, the signs are quite positive. I read also the book which is, was published. We see that, uh, well, this kind of um, representations of women in different uh, levels of politics, it's, uh, it's increased. And uh, it's a kind of uh, wall which is, in Europe, it's nearly destroyed, but we have to continue to work for the destruction of this wall everywhere in the corner, in any corner of the world. And still we have uh, countries where the women, they don't have the right to, to vote, not to be uh, 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 candidates in uh, different political uh, bodies. Another one is uh, social inclusion and social cohesion. And for that, we are working uh, in a shared society project also within the Club of Madrid. The, the other element to help us for not uh, destroying, but at least to minimizing, to reducing the walls is cultural diversity. And uh, quite important is to have a kind of transition from this cultural diversity to, to cultural pluralism. And uh, at the end, for me, it's quite important the destruction of border myths. And still, we are suffering this kind of myth in uh, our region. And my last. Uh, Words, my last words are, well, we have to work on destruction of the walls. We have to deal in everyday life with the walls, but the most important is what we are doing to destroy or to reduce these walls and, uh, of course, instead of them, to build bridges, to substitute them by bridges, and this is possible. We have this uh, courage, we have this force, and we have to do this together. Thank you.